synchronization of the heart to affect the brain so that we can have a more relaxed, clear, more objective perception of life and situations. And also to create a harmony between the, uh, here we say, harmonious heart rhythms, creating an internal synchronization, which improves our perceptions, thoughts, feelings, and the ways we, which we deal with illness and other stresses. We heal ourselves much more quickly when we're feeling love, when we're feeling gratitude. And then there is the matter of the harmony or synchronization between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. When we are experiencing negative emotions, we create confusing messages in which the sympathetic and the parasympathetic give um, confusing messages to the opposite messages to the organs, and one is saying close down, and the other is saying speed up. And this raises havoc with the body and the nervous system. <clears throat> and gradually the, the various organs begin to malfunction. When we're feeling love, that creates a synchronization. When we experience love in our hearts we, with coherent rhythms, which in turn allow for the regeneration of all the organs and the mind. It is feeling love is a very healing process for all of the nervous system. Now, we move on to some experience, experiments by Dr. Jean, Dean Ornish. He's a cardiologist, and you can, his site is mentioned below, uh, www.pmiri.org. Let me just mention that I will be uploading all of this to YouTube, and then you can watch it there, and you can stop it, and you can write down um, these addresses, or just write them as I'm speaking now. In one experiment at Yale University, 119 men and 40 women, those who felt that others loved them had fewer obstac obstacles to blood flow in their heart. That is, feeling loved allows a freer blood flow physically, not energy now. We're not talking about energy. Physically, the blood flow to the heart. 276 persons had better health when they had more connections with others they asked people how many people they felt connected to. Um, and then they measured the health of these people, how often they get ill, how quickly they recover. And it was a large group sample. Um, and they found that the more connected we feel, the better health we have. And then of 700 elderly persons, those who had others to express their love to, not from, to, and felt useful, and in many cases they have may have felt useful to dogs and cats, to their pets, had better health. So the health was based on their ability to feel useful and to feel love for other people. And of course, being loved by other people is also something which improves our health. But the main thing here is that feeling love is that what's in improves our health. In a study of 10,000 men, those who felt that their wives do not love them had twice as many problems with their hearts. So here we see the effect of feeling not loved. So feeling love for others and feeling not loved are two, and feeling loved by others are very important for our health and our clarity. And then these cardiologists at the HeartMath Institute decided to create a method called the freeze frame method. Freeze frame comes from Hollywood, actually. It says you hold the frame and you look at it and you examine it. And here the frame is something in our lives. I will explain that in a moment, something that's happening. And so what they did uh, was they taught this method, and I will explain it in a moment. And when people did this, they had increased levels of IgA, which means a stronger immune system, increased DHEA, which means reduced aging, less cortisol, which means less stress, and more oxytocin, which is an anti-depression emotion, which is a hormone, which is the hormone which women excrete when they're pregnant, and which makes them feel good. 
And all of these are affected by this method, which is called freeze frame. Uh, and what we call here in Greece, we have changed the name to listening to your heart. And now you can see here the address for the Heart Math uh, Institute. What have, how do we do this? We sit straight, at least we like to sit straight. It could also perhaps be done lying down. We bring to mind the person, situation, object, event, or problem that concerns us and observe how we feel about this. We do this for about two or three minutes. Then for about three to five minutes, we breathe into the center of your chest, your heart center. Of course, we're breathing into the nostrils, but we imagine that the air or light or energy, preferably, are coming into the center of our chest and that when we breathe out, it's flowing out of the solar plexus, just down below under the sternum. And so we can imagine that we're inhaling light and energy into the chest area and exhaling from the solar plexus. After doing this for about three to five minutes, we now bring to mind someone or something that creates the feeling of love and or gratitude. We might feel these feelings in our heart center. So we bring that person or the, perhaps an expression of the divine, whatever religion you belong to, um, or even your pet or place in nature, whatever a piece of music, whatever creates the sense of love and gratitude. And you focus on that and you allow the feelings of love and gratitude to increase in your body, in your heart center, in your mind. And that goes on for about two, two to five minutes. And once we have established ourselves in the feeling of love, and we are, have changed channel, you know, we have changed channel from worrying about the situation that was bothering us, or not being able to find a solution to that, to feeling love. And then we bring that into this love situation. We bring the problem we want to solve, perhaps the person we're having a problem with, or the behavior, or even practical problems. This is taught to bank employees. This is taught to large businesses, to thousands of employees, as a way to find more effective solutions, not only emotional problems, but practical problems. And then as we continue to be focused now on the subject that we have chosen, the problem, we allow ourselves to receive new ways of perceiving this, which are now becoming from this new vibration, this feeling of love in our heart center, which allows us to perceive this differently, to feel differently, and to be inspired to react or act differently in relationship to this problem or situation. And then the next step, of course, would be to employ uh, this uh, um, new way of perceiving. Okay? So after doing the freeze frame method, and we have perceived a new way of seeing this and feeling about this and reacting to this, then we employ this new uh, perception, this new way of dealing with this into in our practical life. And so we enjoy that new perception. Now I'm going to spend the little time that we have left to give you a short, an extremely short introduction to energy psychology and its development. I will speak of some of the forms of energy psychology that I have come in contact with. There may be many forms that I have not come in contact with. All of these we use extensively now here in Greece with our members in seminar settings and in personal appointments. It is said that the father of energy psychology is Roger Callahan, who discovered the thought field therapy, or TFT. You can see his site there at the bottom. And Roger discovered, I won't get into the details now, that by tapping on certain acupuncture points 
while focusing on the emotion which is disturbing us, that that would change the energy field of our body and then change the structure of those emotions. Now this is in addition to the change of belief. Often we have changed beliefs already. We don't believe that we are in danger of heights, of fire, of the airplane. We experience panic without there being any logical belief. And so what energy psychology does is to remove the energy aspect. The mental belief may have changed, but the energy aspect of the fear is still there. And this tapping on these points, you can see most of them are on the face, some of them on the hands, and then under the armpits and in the solar uh, in the collarbone area. Now, Gary Craig was one of Roger Callahan's main students, and after studying with Roger Callahan, he developed his own method, which is called EFT, or Emotional Freedom Techniques, which is probably the technique of energy psychology which has become more widespread in the world because it's very simple. The TFT, you have to know how to test. You have to test which points to tap on. With the EFT, it's standard. You tap on these 12 points or 8 points, no matter, depending on how you do it. And you see that the same points that were discovered by Roger Callahan, but Gary just created a protocol to be done on all situations. Now, an experienced EFT master may alter this, may add other aspects, may tap on other points, may omit some points, but it's a basic procedure that anyone could learn and help others and help themselves, which is the most important aspect. Now, a student of Gary was Pat Carrington, and she developed EFT with choices, and you can see her site there also. And what happened was that after reducing the emotional tension of the fear, say, or the guilt, or the anger, or the bitterness, then one can choose a positive phrase which will help that person, if they believed that phrase, to be free from the negative emotion. So we, we introduce now beliefs. And so we choose that phrase, and then we say, even though until now, I have felt, and we say the emotion, when or because, and we say the stimulus here, I now choose to remember, to realize or experience, and here we fill in our belief. The new belief that we want to believe, and if we believe it, we will be free, even more free, freer from that emotion. And then the tapping process changes a bit. We tap one pass of tapping with the negative emotion, and which we were feeling in the beginning, one with the positive, and then one 